Good morning. Good morning, everybody. That was a, a slightly fraught couple of minutes there. I was trying to work out why it wasn't going live. Well, I got there in the end, so that's good. So I'll just wait for a few of you to, to pop in and just check on my phone where everybody is. So how is everyone this morning? It's, um, oh, there we are. That's better. I can do that. Yes. So it's one of those days today. I've been trying to, um, I was trying to get on there and it wasn't having, oh, I've got reflection on my glasses now, and it wasn't having it. But we are here now, so that's all that matters. <clears throat> so today I'm going to talk about the ancestors. Um, it's just me today, which is, sometimes that's nice, sometimes that's a bit daunting actually. But it is just me today, so I'm just going to get up my phone so I can see any comments as they come in, so I can respond to them. Really tired this morning, I slept well, but... Um, yeah, really tired, but that's good. Right, good morning, Emma. How are you? Uh, oh, hang on. It's wanting me to put on my telly. I'm sure my husband would enjoy that. He's in the middle of watching Sunday morning football, and all of a sudden he gets me bleating away at him from the telly. I'm sure he'd love it. Morning, Andy. Morning, Emma. So, yeah, as I was saying, sometimes it's a bit daunting just being one. It's quite nice having somebody else to bounce off of. But hey-ho, here we are. So... Yes, so today I'm going to talk to you about the ancestors. <clears throat> so I love the ancestors. Now I appreciate they're not for everyone. A couple of friends have really struggled um, with this subject over the years. I know that for a fact. And that's because um, one friend in particular, she went into care. And although she knows very well who her mother is, she has no connection with her in any way she doesn't want any connection with her and that must be really really difficult to deal with um I mean obviously if you're if you're more than happy to, to talk to your ancestors that's great um but sometimes there are people that you don't want in your life for a variety of reasons or they did things that weren't nice and that's really really difficult what I did think is reassuring um especially for those people is that we are the sum of so many people that one bad apple in the whole thing um, isn't going to spoil the mix and always remember that you the wonderful you that is this beautiful breathing walking talking thinking kind loving creature that you are is a mixture of so many people your DNA has come down from, from, from millennia so one bad apple is not going to make you rotten um, so I mean, that, that particular lady, she's not watching it. If she does watch, she'll know that that's meant for her. So that's to you. That's to you, my darling. Um, so ancestors, why am I talking about ancestors? Well, as we come towards Sawang or Halloween, um, they always say that the, the veil is thinner um, and it's, it is particularly connected to the ancestors. So that's why I thought I'd start talking about them now, although we're a few weeks away from Sawang. And it's one of the reasons that they say that is because the, um, the ancestors in Gaelic, Celtic Gaelic tradition, it's thought the ancestors return for the night on um, at Samhain, Samhain, spelt Samhain, some people call it Samhain, Samhain, however you call it, doesn't matter, potato, potato, doesn't really matter, does it? And it's interesting that you have all those people thinking about their ancestors at the same time of the year. So you get the Mexican Day of the Dead. Now, I'm guessing that that is a Christianity thing for the Catholic Church to went to Mexico. But even so, all around the world, people have venerated the ancestors and the, and the deceased that have gone before for a long time. Um, and it is a country, it's Indonesia. It's definitely Indonesia, where they actually get the bones of their ancestors out at a particular time of year and have a drink with them. They will, there's photographs of people with mummified skeletons or skeletons. Um, also, it's also about coming up for Beltane in the Southern Hemisphere, Angie. Yeah, absolutely. And that is why that's, that's another thing that's interesting. It's like a dualistic thing. Um, obviously in, for example, Australia, New Zealand and uh, the South America, half of South America, they were coming up for Beltane. 
uh, in the southern hemisphere and um, parts of India and parts of Africa and my geography isn't brilliant so help me out here anybody um, but Beltane has a connection as well because to do with new beginnings and the fertility and lots of times the ancestors are asked for that for help with that so it's not a new thing to go to the ancestors and you think now if you've lost somebody i'm gonna do this for my mum i'm gonna do this for you know for my dad i even remember sophie um she was running in um she was doing cross country because she was a very good runner when she was younger and um you know granddad her granddad had not long passed away and she was i'm gonna i'm gonna do this for granddad and i remember what granddad said you know which was Pace yourself, girl, for three quarters away, then run like hell. And I can hear him say that. I can hear him say that now. It's, it's funny how and that's 11 years ago and that stays stays with me and it stayed with a very young Sophie too. So the dead are thought to return at Sawain, um, hence why the ancestors. So there's lots of Sawain and Day of the Dead customs, which I'll talk about nearer to, uh, to Sawain, because um, you've got... Halloween is an abbreviation of All Saints Eve and the first of November is All Saints Day and that's when they venerate the saints who of course were, were once human allegedly and the second of November is All Souls Day which is an Anglican and European Day of the Dead basically when you put out um, so we have dumb suppers where they lay a place at the table for people who, um, who have gone before and it's, it's interesting that this has been something that has been going on for millennia. People have venerated the ancestors. If you think of the long barrows and that we have, people didn't just discard their loved ones. They wanted something to remember them through. They wanted something to, um, as a memorial to them. And they built, you know, originally it would have been a shallow grave or, you know, they would just have been obviously the, the physical and the practical side of having to you know not have the body lying around but over time they've gone into building sort of mausoleums and monuments and these beautiful beautiful long barrows if you've ever been inside a long barrow um i've been inside west kennet and it's amazing and you can feel you can feel something in there it's absolutely amazing and over the years we've done um the family tree me and my mum, uh, I think one of my earliest memories of my mum is just chomping through a, a graveyard where they're looking for, for, for people. Um, this is before the days of, you know, ancestry and genes reunited and all of that. And, uh, you know, we, we'd go and look at old parish registers and, you know, we would, we would be the glee of finding these people in the archives and all the rest of it. So we've done that for years and years and years. And uh, so visiting churches with her and there's there's something about there's a particular church. It's down at um, it's all saints at Tudley. And whenever I walk in there, I get a sense. Oh, you've just done your DNA, have you? I've, I've got mine to do. I really must do mine. Um, I get a real sense of although I'm obviously I'm not Christian. Um, I get a real sense of the, the people walking down that but part of that aisle for births, for marriages, for deaths, and the floor's worn, and I know that my ancestors have walked down through there, and it is quite, it's its almost palpable, it's, it's almost tangible, it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling. So I know quite a lot about my ancestors, which I don't know if that makes me more connected with them. I think it must do, I think it must, because I know their stories, and even those that I don't know, I know a little bit about them. I know who's had a difficult life, who had a long and prosperous life in theory. So I shall come to that in a minute. So I did a beautiful ritual that I'm going to share with you. So an ancestor is um, anyone from whom we've descended from. So it goes back. It goes back to so many people. It's absolutely unbelievable. Interesting. I do. Yeah, let us know how, have you got it back, Angie, or have you just done it? I've got a feeling from how you said that, that you've just done it. Um, so I don't know how many of you saw the um, the thing I put up this morning that, about the ancestral mathematics, and it is actually, oh, yeah, you're only 19% English. What else are you, Angie? That's interesting. I mean, we should all be slightly, um, we should have all have roots in Africa, 
And I think if I'm right, that we, every life started in Africa, did a sort of a swathe round to the Middle East and then up. And there's a lot, there should be a lot of Viking in us in particular, but they're sort of the Indo-European before we came here. So I'll wait and see what else Angie's got. I don't know if she's going to be able to tell us. But um, yeah, so the, the little picture I put up this morning with the ancestral mathematics absolutely gobsmacked me. And I've seen it before lots of times. So the time you get to your eight generations back, 66% Celt, of course you are. Of course you are. Where, where are you from, Angie? You're, I've got a feeling in your Midlands way. I've got a feeling Angie's Midlands way. But my husband, he's, um, his dad, his, these fingers bent in like this. And it raised to tens in here. And Ben, my father-in-law, was originally from Dunleary. Oh, Birmingham, you're from, yeah, Midlands, yeah. And um, obviously that they're, they're Irish. And uh, when he saw the consultant, he said, well, Ben, he said, obviously that's your Viking ancestry. And Ben's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he said that this particular thing, where the, the tendons raised, they found that um, in, it originates in Viking bodies. And it's it's a tender thing. It does the, the toes curl over as well. And when you think about it, Ben was from the south of Dublin, and obviously the Viking raids were everywhere. So yeah, so we, you know, my husband's family are probably quite strong Vikings. So we must do ours because I'd love to know. We we call him the Viking because he's a bit fierce, and my husband absolutely adores Vikings. So by the time you get to um, eight generations back, including you. That is your great, 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 great grandparents. That's 128 people that have been involved in making you. This is the exponential increase, i.e. it's doubled every time. Remember my grandma had his fingers curling up. Yeah, where are you from, Emma? You're, because that's, I mean, it could be all sorts of things. It, it tends to be these two that curl in. Nearly 10% Iberian. Oh, is that, where's Iberian? Is that sort of um, top of Africa, Middle East? I'm terrible with geology is geography that's the, that's the one at O level I've got my worst results in but the fingers curling like that for, for him and all of his brothers as well he had it to, and they had to zigzag cut his palm because obviously otherwise if they just certainly would have pinged back and some of some of my husband's uncles their toes curled under and it was the tendons pulling in the digits um so that might be is what's the likelihood of your granddad having viking blood emma yeah, that's interesting. So me being the, the geek that I am, I wanted to know how many ancestors we would have from when sort of time began. And it got to the point that my phone would no longer calculate the number. And I actually had to Google how to say the number. There were that many numbers. I thought, I don't know if, what I'm in now. I don't know how many numbers. So of the last generation, 12 generations, over say 400 years allowing 25 people per generation you would have you ready for this this is 400 years approximately 12 generations 4094 ancestors which is quite boggling quite boggling but over the last thousand years so you're then talking about um how many generations was that? That's a lot of generations. Over the last thousand years, the figure is 10995116277776. And I looked at that and I thought, I do not know how many years that is. I can't, my brain is not computing how much that is. So that is over a thousand years, we will have had one trillion. 99 billion 511 million 627,776 ancestors and that I just that is so many people now that obviously brings up what they call the I think it's the ancestors paradox that a thousand years ago there weren't that many people on the planet let alone that many people in the, in the country so what they're saying is that is a lot of those will be doubled as in the sense that people would have married cousins so you might have had and cousins would have married cousins and so that although it looks like there is 
for example, even eight generations ago, marrying, uh, you know, if you're five time great grandparents, you could marry somebody who is your second cousin quite easily, third cousin, whatever, and not even know they were, and you would share half of your DNA or quarter of your DNA or what have you. So that would of your ancestors so that that will work that out that because trying to work that out I was just like there's not that many people on the planet so that's when I came across this thing called the ancestor um genetic ancestral paradox that's it Sussex name of pain we came across during the Norman conquest pain from the pagan paganist Normans we're from Viking settlers because of course you are blue and autocrat we're not in Spain bit of France bit of Italy top of Morocco Tunisia but the Celts originated from a bit oh yes of course they did We've got pains as well, Emma from Sussex. Might have to even talk to you later, might I? Four percent, four point six percent Western Northern Europe. We're a right old little cauldron of of all sorts of wonderful woven DNA strands, aren't we? Here, I must do mine because um, obviously I've bought them. They're here somewhere. I bought them. I bought them to give to my mum and dad um, as a Christmas present, and then my mum. <laughs> Two weeks before Christmas, my mum went, oh, I'd hate to do one of those things. And I was like, oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> but we're going to do them, so it's fine. Yeah, yes, really, yeah. Um, Tunbridge Wells, they were. So that's not quite your bit of Sussex, but they, they ended up in Tunbridge Wells before um, the, that was great-grandparents were Tunbridge Wells, but they had come over from Sussex, I believe. So, yeah. So honestly, a little wonder there, probably related to Emma. And actually, saying that, just 22 generations ago, when we've got over 2 million ancestors, we were most likely related to everybody. I haven't explained that well. Just uh, after 22 generations of being, 22 generations ago, we were, we were most likely still related to most people in our country. So in, in some way, shape or form. I don't quite understand that, but that's, that's I've read that several times when I was looking it up, Googling it, trying to work it out. So it's a bit, also German Denmark Netherlands. Yeah, that's where the um the Norman the Norman invasion would have, have sorted a lot of us out. I've got a lot of French names in my mum's side. Um like Martin, which is a really common French name, isn't it? Martin. Um, Fever and Neve. And obviously Fever is La Fever, Fever and Neve is nephew. So obviously that's a, a, a familial name, isn't it? So that's some of the exciting things that I've been oops, um, looking up. And it was really interesting to look at. Now, at the moment, I won't go into it in great detail because I haven't, I haven't got it 100% in my head yet. And I'm still doing it. But I'm doing an ancestral healing course at the moment. Um, it was recommended to me by a friend who's a soul midwife. And that's something that I was interested in because anyway, I want to be, I want to do soul midwifery, but it's, it just hasn't happened at the moment. Um, and on the, uh, there, they're talking about epigenetics. Now, myself and Jacqueline mentioned epigenetics last week. And what they did in this experiment, epigenetics is about ancestral trauma, and how, how long your, your DNA can, or your, your memories can stay in your body. And there was these little worms, these little round, no, not my flat worms, called nematodes. I'm not quite sure. I'd have to look up what nematodes are. But they are these little worms. And what they did that is that over something like 25 degrees, they will glow. They've got a fluorescent gene and they will glow. Nematodes are round worms. They're probably look very nice. <laughs> um they've got um yeah over 25 degrees they will glow a fluorescent they've got a fluorescent gene so what they did but it's only activated at 25 degrees so they bred these these things they probably use them because they're they probably breed really quickly and they're multi-generational really quickly if you tried to obviously do that obviously there's ethics and you couldn't do it with humans though i have got some human experiments to Experiments, studies, so experiments isn't good, isn't it? A good side there. Um, Warren is my nana's name. That's French. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, that's interesting. I wouldn't wouldn't have said that, but I wouldn't have said that about Martin either. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, so these these little round worms, after they they lit the first generation up, put them in the temperature to remember them, to to um to what's the word? Activate this fluorescent gene, 
Anyway, then after um, seven generations, although they hadn't been in the warm environment, as soon as they put them in the warm environment, they started glowing, lighting up this fluorescent gene of a gene that hadn't been used for seven generations. So that's sort of a very easy example of how these things do carry on. And I don't know if I said this last week or not, but there's an, uh, a study by Rachel Yehuda at uh, Cedars Sinai um, about the Holocaust survivors. And I, I did mention on this last week, but even the um, children and the grandchildren had an increase in anxiety and depression compared to other Jewish families who'd not experienced direct the Holocaust. Absolutely amazing, isn't it? It's, it's you. you and there was, there was another one with the civil war, wasn't there? I did say about this last week, that people who'd been prisoners of wars in the American civil war, their, um, their descendants were more likely to suffer as they had done, which you just don't expect. So there's a lot to be, but I, I haven't said enough about it to talk about it in any depth, but I, I will come back at some point and talk about that. Now, to work with my ancestors, I do this a lot with my... Um, my funeral service, my celebrancy, that I feel very much that they are with me and part of me doing that. Um, and I did a, a beautiful meditation during my training that took me back to pe beyond people I didn't know. And where they came, I have no idea where these images came from, but they came from somewhere. And Every time I've done it, I've had the same people and I couldn't, I couldn't, I could describe their faces because I've seen them enough times now, but it was a really interesting thing to do. Um, I'll just read out to you my notes from our course. So what we basically had to do, um, obviously we closed our eyes and we had to we'd, we'd do this little meditation and um, we had to be aware of our ancestors behind us. And you know, we'd picture our parents, our grandparents and so on as much as you could remember. And then slowly you turn and acknowledge them and you walk back through, um, back to the fire and you ask for a gift. And that's the shortened version. But every single time there was a chap with sort of lots of ginger hair and a beard, a cloth cap. Um, and he was grinning away, he'd got a couple of teeth missing. He was grinning away and he was quite ruddy cheeks. And when I Googled sort of the, the clothing design, it was, it was clearly a peasant. He wasn't, he wasn't any you know royalty or anything like that he he appears to be in a sort of 11th or 12th century costume because he was wearing a cloth cap himself and there's another lady both times she came as well three times sorry she'd got a blue cloth cap but it was more of um it was a different cap to his and she was dressed in blue and she looked worried and she was but she was reaching out and holding my hand but it was in relief and in blessing and both three times I think I did this I saw their faces and I, I, I saw them and I have no idea who they were I've never know who they were because I'll be just possible to trace records back that far but I'm going to do a meditation for you in a little bit not this one because I couldn't get hold of this one um, and I didn't have time to, to sort of really sit down and write one but I found one that I think will will do that so we'll do that in a minute um oh morning Erica good morning ladies my noticeable roots are African yeah my bloodline goes back to African slaves will take to Central America ah uh, my mum's bloodline is white British British so Celts and Viking yes I could I could understand the Viking in you yeah and um, and Erica, yeah, you, yeah, you've, you've definitely, yeah, that's, that's, I wonder how the African slave routes, um, if you're talking about stuff being passed through, there must be an awful lot of anger and sadness there. I mean, we've all got, I mean, how many generations back? Good morning, Sue. Morning, lovely, nice to hear you. Lovely to see you. Sue, Sue's recovering from, from an, an operation, aren't you, Sue? So lots of love to you. Oh, it's lovely to see you pop up. We're talking about ancestors, Sue, in case you've missed that. So, Erica, out of interest, do you know how many blood, how many generations back um, the slaves were in America? Um, yes, that'd be really interesting to know. Thank you for telling us that. Sue, do you know where your roots are from, ancestor-wise? Me and Angie and Emma are all pretty... Um, 
pretty uh, European so far and Celtic and Viking and well, I don't know what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm from Kent as far back as I can go, really. So, oh, Sue, you're watching as well. Good morning, Sue. How are you, Sue Allsworth? Lovely to see you pop up, my darling, as well. How are you doing? Lots of love to you. I know you need lots of hugs at the moment. The big hugs to you, Sue. Um, so what I did do when I was doing my training for... Um, I'm just looking at my hair. And for someone with straight hair, it's just the strangest hair. I'd love to know who gave me this hair because it's bonkers. It's straight, but it just does its own thing. It just, I'd say it'd got a mind of its own, but I don't think it's even got a mind. I think it's out of its mind. As far as you know, you're all Kentish. Yeah, the same as we've got, we've got an intyper from Birmingham. So that could be related to you, Angie. And I've got a couple of, oh, I've got a little bit of tiny bit of Welsh and a tiny bit of Irish in, in mine going back some way but Kentish for 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 an awful lot of it and obviously the, the little bit of French we don't know how so when I was when I did my celibacy training at the end we had to do um a sort of a thanksgiving um a thank you ritual and uh just something to mark that we'd finished it and then we were going forward into what we were doing um and that's the photo I think let me see if I can screen share this um this is the photo I popped up the other day and um there we are let's share that there you go you should be seeing that in a minute that's the photo I shared the other day and that was my ritual when I um was thanking the the ancestors for being with me on my journey so up at the top you've got my great granddad so on there, I've got I've got rose petals from my late mother-in-law's rosebush, rosebush for remembrance, and those are all my ancestors, um, my nans, and in, you see that one in the left bottom corner with all the generations on it. Um, yeah, that's there's my great nan and my great great nan and my aunties, and yeah, and there's my other nan next to them, and then there's my other nan's wedding. My mum's cousin as a sailor boy, and obviously my, you know, all my great grandparents in there as well. Eighteen thirties when the slaves were released, there were four hundred years of slavery. My goodness, my good. And did you have tales brought forward, Erica, from that? Have your family passed down stories about it? Is there much family knowledge about it, or is it something they've tried to forget? I'm just, just out of curiosity. I'm just trying to with the thing we were talking about, about epigenetics and how stuff is passed down, I was just curious whether it's something that isn't talked about or whether it's a nurture in nature. If you hear the stories, you can keep them alive because obviously lots of people didn't read and write or didn't have the ability to be able to write stuff down. So it was an oral tradition, which is why so much of our culture in Britain has has been lost because a lot of it was, was an oral, orally passed down. Um, obviously, your peasants didn't have the writing that, you know, some of the other cultures would have had. So just let me know when you get a minute. So, yeah, so that's that. And I just that was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And the reason I've got that up is not to bore you to um, to death with all my relatives, though I could. I absolutely could. My mum has did, did me. My mum's done it for years, family history. And I've done a um, a, a massive an awful lot with her but she wrote, did me a massive family tree for my 50th birthday um which has got absolutely everybody on let me see if i can here we go let's bring you back to me and this, i don't know how much of it you'll see but this is my family tree this is all the people that are related to me on both sides going back goes on forever and ever and ever and this goes back to what's she got back to she's got back to 1683 someone was born is the earliest there that's on my mum's side and then on my dad's side that's where the pains are but I'll, I'll get back to that anyway well I didn't know all of those people but what I did do was I wrote a little one down for the ritual I wrote a little one down of those that I knew yeah, which is what you saw in the middle of that photograph. And then for this ritual, last Sam Sawang, Mark was away. So normally we'll have a meal and we'll have a, a dumb supper where um, obviously we leave a plate for the ancestors and 
But last year, Mark was away, and I was completely alone. There was nothing going on. Halloween was, I think it was a, I don't know what night it was. Was it a Saturday? I think it was supposed to be a Saturday, because I know myself and Laura were going to um, arrange a party, but COVID had better plans. So for whatever reason, I was on my own. And I just sat there with my little, my little tiny family tray. And I've got the photos out for those that I knew about. And I just put them, I set it up similar to, to that other one. And I just spent a little time with each ancestor after sort of, you know, getting into the mood and doing a little bit of meditating just to be, just to be sort of calm and everything. And I spent a little bit of time with each ancestor, looking at the photos if I had them. And the memories that came back were astonishing. Um, so like with my grandparents, my parents are both very much still alive, thank goodness. So with all my grandparents, I sat and went through the memories I could remember about them. The things that, you know, the little things like my granddad, um, I'd been putting runner bean beans in a, you know, the, the old um, washing line poles where you had the, the little handle line that you'd wind the cord around to stop it, to stop it coming back down again. That had rusted off. And there was a hole there, so I'd put beans in there. And I can I could remember doing this with granddad and different things about my nans. And then when it got to the people I didn't know, I just spent a few as much time as I had with each person remembering the things I knew about them. So I knew, for example, one of my great grandmothers had lost her mum at 13, and she was the oldest, and she brought all her brothers and sisters up and then didn't marry till very, very late. And, you know, I sort of said to her, acknowledge what difficult time she must have had as a 13 year old girl, bringing up six younger brothers and sisters, as well as dealing with her grief. And, um, you yeah, know, I did that with all the relatives, because obviously, like I said, I know a lot about a lot of them. And uh, most of my grand, I've got picked photographs of all of my great grandparents, which is something I'm really pleased about. Um, my dad never shared, but his second wife, Rose, thinks I have Native American grandmother because of the texture of her hair was apparently smooth. And smooth. Oh, OK, that's interesting. Native American as well. That's really interesting, Erica. Now, you say that about Native American. As far as I know, this, there, it, it is linked, trust me. Um, I've got absolutely no Scottish blood whatsoever, but I do love Scotland and I've been to Scotland. And Mark and I went um, about four years ago. Um, with a grand tour and it was amazing we went to Glencoe which was I was so emotional going to Glencoe it was absolutely I was so emotional I was so upset I was just sobbing my heart out and we went in to the visitor centre um to hear the story and I I, I knew this I knew there was a massacre uh, it, I know that it was the McDonald's that were um massacred only because I looked it up last night because I was going to mention this walked in and it was the Campbells that sort of betrayed them but I knew it was the Campbells but I couldn't have told you which one I, I have to check every time anyway I walked in we look at these exhibits and on the wall in the distance are two good morning Jen good morning lovely are two photographs of um a, a Scotsman because he's got a tartan or pictures so or very of a tartan beret on and a, a, an Indigenous American lady and I just said to Mark I know them and I literally ran over to them and I just looked at them and I thought I know I know these faces I know you and I've not researched Glencoe before I knew there'd been a massacre up until we went to the visitor centre I I vaguely knew that there were Campbell's and McDonald's through reading um witch light I've got witch light fantastic book let me show you uh where is it no, it's not there who's starting on witch light there's an amazing story called Witch Light, and that talks about it, but it doesn't go into details about the characters. Um, and I just knew these people, and at the, in particular, it was the Native American lady who I just knew, and she was called Catherine, and they were Nez Perce. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but they were sort of um, Idaho. As I googled them last night, because I thought I've got to, I must remember to say that because I had no clue who these people were, what, what was, what my connection was to them, and then then that got me to thinking about how can you, how does ancestral, um, ancestral, ancestral information come down if you have other lives as well, or did were you? I I don't know. That's really confusing me. But anyway, so that's um, some of the things, and I I say so I do work a lot with my ancestors. Um, 
in fact my mum's my mum's dad's family were undertakers and so I think a lot of my skills with dealing with with funerals and that come from them and another strange thing I had about just we're going on again a little bit about the epigenetics of it was I was making a nut roast one um Saturday Sunday whatever it was and I thought because obviously I'm a vegetarian I thought oh I haven't got any any nuts and I just went oh I'll go and get some ch- sweet chestnuts from from the, through the fields so off I trot and it's only when I'm walking down the road I'm thinking I've never picked sweet chestnuts in my life but where's that come from so I went and picked these sweet chestnuts and I just thought what do I do with them obviously I know you um you know which ones to pick um, and when I got back, I had to Google how to how to get the sweet chestnuts out. And as I did it, it was as though other hands were doing it. These, my hands seemed to know what to do and how to, you have to split, you have to cross them and split them. And then it, the, you want the bit that's inside. And I did them so instinctively. I had to look up how to do it. But once I'd looked it up, I did them so instinctively. It really was quite strange. It really was very, very strange. It was as though, I mean, it sounds bizarre, but it was as though somebody else's hands were doing it for me. And I just said, I wonder how many of my relatives have gone, oh, you know, let's go and get some chestnuts. And I've never gone and picked chestnuts with my family, with my mum. I've gone and scrumped a few apples and things. But yeah, it was really, yeah, it was amazing, Emma. I, I, I just, I was, I was, all the way down there, go, I've never picked sweet chestnuts. What are you on about, you daft thing? But, you know, I didn't poison myself and they were very nice. And now I know how to go and uh, forage sweet chestnuts and use them in my cooking, which is amazing. So what I'm going to do now is I've got a little, um, where's it gone? Here we are. A little meditation to do with you if you mean, if you want to. If you don't want to, then thank you for popping in. We'll have a little chat at the end of it. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Um, I haven't got any music with it um, at the moment, but it's just a meditation I found. And this was on a Pathias blog and it's called Nature's Sacred Journey. Um, so if you want to get yourselves into a little position to do this, what I will do is I will I will re- will record it properly with a little bit of music that is um, which, which I can get licensed and put it on my YouTube page. And it's by Erica Barron. It's not you under a different name, Erica, is it? So. What I say, you can either, I tried to um, copy and paste it so I could put the words up, but it won't let me do it. So but I will record it properly and you can uh, you can give it a go. Try it now. And then if not, you can give it a go when you've perhaps got a bit more time if you're busy now. So. OK, so take a few deep breaths. Make yourself comfortable. And relax your body. So follow the sound of my voice as I count down from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one. So in your mind, picture a giant tree, a huge tree bigger than any tree you've ever seen before. This is the world tree, a gateway between the worlds. Imagine that the tree is a doorway, a portal that you can easily pass through. Step through and stand before the great tree. Hear the wind in its branches. Smell the sweet earth where the roots dig in. Reach out and feel the bark. Keep your hands touching the bark and hold the intention of finding an ancestor ancestor spirit to help you 
in your part to restore balance in the world. Search in the roots of the tree for an opening. And when you find it, step down through the roots and you will find a tunnel. The tunnel slopes gently downwards. Follow the tunnel down and down into the spiral as you go deep down into the earth. At the end of the tunnel, you begin to see a light flickering like a fire. Your heart may be pounding, but you also know that this is for you and you walk towards the light. The tunnel ends in a forest clearing. There is a great fire burning high in the middle of the clearing and around it sit the spirits of the ancestors. Some ancestors are simply watching the fire whilst others are dancing round and round. Wait patiently at the edge of the clearing until one of them breaks away and comes to join you. This may be a recent ancestor, someone you knew in life, or it may be someone from a distant past. Whoever it is, they welcome you. It may be an ancestor of blood or an ancestor of spirit. If you do not recognize your ancestor, introduce yourself. Ask your ancestor for any wisdom and guidance that they may have for you. What wisdom from older times can they help you with in your work? What messages do they have for you? Maybe you simply need a hug. They may offer you a gift. Or they may help you remember a conversation. Search within yourself to see if you have a gift to offer them in return. Thank your ancestor guide for their help and their wisdom. Cast your eyes around the circle. What faces stand out? And reluctantly, you know it's time to leave. So you walk back slowly to the tunnel and you enter it. You follow the tunnel up as it slopes back. Follow it winding back up and up until once again you are at the base of the world tree. Hold your hands to the bark of the tree and offer thanks for facilit facilitating the journey. And then slowly come back to the here and the now. Come back to this time and this place. But you will always be able to remember what the ancestors told you any gifts that they gave you and know that you can always return. So that was just a very little one I found. So I don't know if any of you did that, if any of you had any anything that 
you wanted to share I will record that properly and I'll get some get my son to put some licensed music on it but I think it is quite nice to be able to sit with them and spend some time with them um uh oh you've got some Scottish as well Erica well there you go that could be it but I know when I did um it wasn't the same meditation as that because I couldn't I couldn't find that. and I did that very briefly just to give you an idea of how you could do it I found that um I couldn't concentrate clear but I'd love to try what I'm going to do Angie is I'm going to record it properly and with some proper gaps in it for you to be able to it's just when I was reading off that I found but I will record a proper one and put up um didn't expect anyone to be there we had a full circle oh yeah and I'm a bit nasal with cold at the moment. So, but yeah, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? When you're not expecting to do it. And obviously, you know, it's, uh, you've obviously got other things going on in the house, but like I say, I will record it and do it. Um, oh, Emma replying to Emma. Oh, what's this? A small girl came to hold my hand. She had long blonde hair and she led me to watch her play with some stones. Ooh, interesting. It's interesting. And you know what? When I the one I did with the course I was doing, every time it was the same people. So I don't know who they are. Um, but it'd be interesting if you did it again another time. And there are so many out there, there are so many that are all pre-recorded. Um, I know I once asked a friend of mine who does past life regression if we go back to somewhere because we've got a fascination of that point of time in history or if we have a point of fascination with the point of time in history because we lived in that time and we discussed that long and long and um in in depth but we never did get to the end of that so yeah so that's a little bit about working with the ancestors and how you can connect with them and um yeah that's it really because I'm hungry and I'm gonna go and get something to eat <laughs> so that's me for today thank you for joining me hope that was interesting for you um Oh, I also saw my Nan's partner who died many years ago. Oh, that's lovely. Spending some time with Nan this morning, always very refreshing. Oh, that's lovely. We'd like to hear that again. Oh, I'm really glad you know my husband's great grandfather's name was Stuart, but for some reason. And Chase Shepherd. Oh, okay. That is interesting, isn't it? Wonder why I did that, Angie. What I what I'll say, what I'll do is I will record a proper one and I'll put the um these always go on YouTube. You can always find it again on here and they always go on my YouTube account, Walking With My Goddess, but I will record a proper one um, and I'll um, I'll get that done. And what I do is I'll get my son to put a lovely picture up and some, he's got a license for the music so I can, um, can uh, dodgy, I reckon. I reckon you, <laughs> probably. So next week, my friend Naomi Manning is joining us. And she is, she loves a pilgrimage. She goes, she very much works with the Kaliak. And she regularly goes on little journeys on her own, which is incredibly brave. And she goes to places that connect with the Kaliak. And she's got a little tiny caravan and she goes, she, she's a great walker. And she does some amazing trips. And she's she's been up to Scotland and she got stranded up there a bit because of the uh, the petrol situation. So she got an extra week of being away. So she was well happy. And um, so she's joining me next week, next Sunday, to talk about um, pilgrimage. Because they don't have to be great, long, massive pilgrimages. Um, sometimes going to somewhere local is the thing and you can you know you, you can camp you can do all sorts of things camping might be a swear word to some of you but anyway thank you for joining me and it's lovely to hear your comments i'm glad that was useful for some of you and i will see you next week bye